Believe it or not, Mr. Peter Obi is a Democrat. Who would have thought that Peter Obi would one day visit Wale Shonka after what happened barely a month ago? What a humble man. What humility. His humility is beyond comprehension. And these are characteristics that is rare in leadership. And this is why Nigerians are saying that their mandate must be recovered because Peter Obi is the example of what Nigerian leadership needs. It is the example of what a leader should be like. Barely a month ago, Peter Obi went and paid a visit to whom he addressed as a father. Guys, watch this Candidate video and Labour let me Party know what Peter you think. Obi set social media bars on Sunday after posting photos of his visit to Nobel laureate Professor Wole Shoinka amid controversy between the professor and Peter Obi's supporters, the obedience. Peter Obi's visit is coming one month after Wole Shoinka in a television interview accused the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, of fascism for faulting the declaration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as winner of the presidential election, despite not winning 25% of the votes in the FCT. His comment ignited heavy criticism from obedience. Peter Obi in his post on Sunday lauded Shoinka over his achievements on the world stage and his struggle for a better Nigeria. Let me take Peter Obi's tweet. I'll just take one or two of them. Peter Obi wrote, Today, I visited one of Nigeria's most revered figures and an international literary icon, Professor Wole Shoinka. Professor Wole Shoinka has been a father whom I hold in very high esteem for what he has achieved and stands for in the struggle for a better Nigeria. His reputation as a fighter for justice and equity in our society has been legendary and we will never ignore them. I had a very useful and enriching discussion about his aspirations for a better and greater Nigeria. Well, you know, a lot of reactions have trailed this uh, photo and a visit. I'll take one from, I believe, Franklin, who wrote, the real unifier. There are those who go only to people who are with them to an extent. Yours, you go to unite even those who are against you. That's how a true unifier is known. One who understands that leadership is about serving and not imposing or war. Thank you for this exceptional leadership character and teaching. Nigeria will work in our time. Refine over to you. I mean, truth has to be said. After all of that that ensued, the actions and the counteractions and reactions, it is a very dignifying thing. And kudos to Peter Obi. You see, when a man does well, let's say he has done well. And I think in all of this, he has shown that the unity and the continued peace of Nigeria is his priority. You know, to walk out and reach out to revert Professor Wallace Inka you know, to talk to him about the furtherance of unity and peace and development in this country, despite the fact that, yes, there might be diversions, you know, and, you know, divisions as regards thought process. You know, Professor Rolishinga was on this show and he famously said that the position of that Dati Babame took in that interview was fascist in nature and all of that. And there was a big blowback. But Peter Obi has shown that beyond reasonable doubt that he has a right to go visit anybody and especially highly revered Professor Wolishenka, and I must repeat, because we cannot downplay what Professor Wolishenka means to this country. He's still the only Nobel laureate in Nigeria as we speak today. No other Nigerian has won that highly coveted prize. Mm -hmm. And he has done well for this country in many ramifications. He's fought for the forefront of democracy. He had to go through the Nadeko routes and all of that. But, you know, after all of that, there are many things he has said after then on his statement that was at variance with what people thought happened on ground. Mm. And also, a lot of people, when he said that, were taken aback because when you look at what happened on ground, it was a danger of a single story. We can't just say, hey, that Ibaba Ahmed was fascist. What happened in Lagos? Wasn't it fascism during the election? that people were denigrated because they're from a certain ethnic group and treated unfairly mm -hmm. and issues were politicized and a man that just came out to vie for a position from Lagos Island because his mother is Igbo was treated in a certain way that was called Chinedu and some people pushed a narrative 
that all oh, Igbos are coming to take over. Wasn't that fascism? Well, if you recall, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie yeah. on this show actually put another yeah. name to fascism yeah. where she says that INEC is fascist for and, denying... And, 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 and I also want to go in the line. INEC that has not told us till date what constituted the technical glitch. Is that not fascism? Because, you see, a lot of Nigerians came out and, you see, I want to say this. If we want to build a country, let's build it with honesty and fairness. Let's not say because it favors you today, others can go and die. Mm. Because you forget what goes around will come around someday. The reason why a lot of people decided to come out and vote and trust the process was because INEC said we brought in technology will bring about fairness. But today, INEC has not been able to t tell us what caused the technical glitch. And anybody that talks, everybody says, oh, keep quiet. Don't ask questions. I think that's the true fascism. But I think in all of this, I'm happy Peter Obi has gone to Professor Wallace Yunka. They've talked about things. They've ironed things out. Right. And it's for the furtherance of this country. And also, Professor Wallace Yunka is highly respected and revered. You might disagree with his thought process, but please, it's not worth it abusing or embarrassing the man. Right. He's done so much for this country, and he loves this country just like everybody. You see, the truth is we all love the country, but we might have dif differing thoughts and opinions. All right.